So if we can uh, uh, go to the next uh, page. Uh, one question which I'll throw out um, to the audience, to the panel, whoever, whoever wants to answer it is, uh, how do you think about, as a defense counsel, whether you want to hire uh, expert witnesses at all? Let's talk about it in the context of this, of this case. How would you think, how would you decide, um, what would your thoughts be about whether you want to hire uh, any expert witness? Any, yep. any volunteers? <laughs> Okay, I think that's I think that's right. Are they going to help you win? But the helping you win doesn't necessarily mean will they help? Will they incrementally move your case? In other words, will their testimony help? And there's a critical distinction there. You have to look as a whole at your. From my perspective, you have to look at what is the case going to look like without the expert witness or without expert witnesses altogether. Okay. What, is going to the, what is the lineup going to be of the fact witnesses? Uh, what, what are the documents going to look like? In the particular fact pattern that, that we talked about, the, the, let's say it's a case by the SEC, the SEC has a problem, which is they've sued everybody. Okay? They haven't turned, at least according to the hypo, they haven't turned to anybody. Now, unfortunately or unfortunately, in, in the real world, uh, they, they do t uh, tend to, to arrange to get a witness or two uh, on their side. But in this hypothetical, we arranged it that you know Sarah Brown is being sued, Mr. Smith is being sued, uh, Alpha is being sued, everybody's being sued, and they're all, uh, not surprisingly, singing out of the same uh, hymn book. And while there are some documents that raise questions, there are no documents that are so problematic that, for example, contain the, uh, you know, the allegedly material non-public information being transmitted up to, uh, you know, up to uh, uh, the portfolio manager. That information doesn't get communicated at all. And even with respect to the information from Sarah Brown, to, to Smith, that information is, is, is oral information. There's no written record of exactly uh, what, was, what was said. So this is a case where the documentary evidence is not particularly strong. All the, all the people who are actually were involved and would get up to speak at trial are all going to be presenting a, a defense perspective. So you as a defense counsel might be feeling pretty good about your case. And in that circumstance, if you have a choice, and that's a critical caveat, if you have a choice, you might not want to be mucking with an excellent uh, factual case. So let me go back to your point, which was an excellent one. Well, wouldn't it help you to, to get evidence from uh, you know, these, th excuse me, these three witnesses or, or any of these three witnesses? All the testimony that you, you, know, you wouldn't put them on unless they could give helpful testimony, and we'll go through exactly what their helpful uh, testimony would be. And if it stopped with their direct testimony, that would be great, but unfortunately it doesn't. You have to consider what is the cross-examination going to look like? What themes will the other side be able to reinforce through cross-examination? For example, um, the investment update document that we were talking about before. Uh, the SEC could ask a lot of questions about the, uh, that line in the, in, in the investment update about I'll call you. Could ask those, you know, I'll call you. It could be, it could be that theme could be reinforced through several uh, different questions in a way that suggests to the jury that there's something very nefarious about that, about that phone call. Um, or you know, they could present counter experts who would do a counter analysis. So when you're thinking about do I want expert uh, witnesses, to the extent you have control, again, that very important caveat, you need to think not just I'm excited about what great evidence I could put in, but you know, what are the risks on the downside and how likely am I going to prevail 
uh, anyway. Uh, that's, you know, that, that's the overarching issue from my perspective if you have control. So let's, uh, one question is, do you have control? Anybody want to take that? Well, you, you, could have, uh, you could have control over your case, but the government's going to come forward with, with a, a, at least one witness to talk about materiality. And so uh, yeah, I, I, that's almost certain because you just can't leave that topic out there in the ether for the jury to try to muddle through as if you're the, the, on the government side. So you're going to have at least one expert thrown at you. So the question is, do you counter? The, the problem here is the hypo in the sense that the SEC's cases usually depend upon a, a, a dramatic event. So, in other words, you buy before the announcement of a merger, and the information was, did you get information about the merger? But here, what was the dramatic event here that would cause these people to sell? Uh, and that, that I doubt very much uh, uh, whether the commission would bring a case like this. There's no event that took place that they could have bought before the event, unless you're saying the postponement of the of the of the, yeah, that would, the product. Right. No, that would that would be the argument. And in the right fact pattern, in the right fact pattern, they would bring, and it's, if it was clear, if it was clear that the postponement of a product. Uh, was you know was going to be market moving? Then you would have such so a case. So really, this is a private case that could be brought here. The private case yeah. because they haven't disclosed, and then you get to the causation factor, and therefore you probably need the expert. Right now, actually, on this hypo, I tend to think the SEC would not bring the case. Right, right. They would not bring but the a case. Private party would, I think. Private As in the sense of of the fact that that there was causation, loss causation that the stock had been inflated because the, they're coming out with a product, and then when they don't come out with a product uh, and they announce it, that caused the stock to drop. And there you would need your expert witness. So, so one issue is, one issue is, is the, is the other side going to have an expert anyway? Okay. Uh, now there's a related issue, which is let's say the SEC would have, or the, or the private party, private party, private party would have an expert witness. Are you going to try to exclude the other side's expert witness? Well, if you put up an expert witness on the same, uh, on, on the same, kind, you know, the same kind of expert witness on the same kind of issue, it becomes very easy for the judge to say, well, I'll let both sides uh, present, their, present their expert uh, witnesses, as opposed to trying to fight before the judge, uh, this kind of expert uh, evidence, and then if you lose, then you, then you present a, uh, a rebuttal uh, expert witness. You always have to be ready uh, in the event that, that you have to come forward with an expert witness. Uh, and, and in any event, one thing that you have to do is you have to have a, at least a consulting expert in order to think through what kinds of uh, of expert testimony could I present? Uh, what kinds of expert testimony could the other side uh, present? Uh, and very often a lawyer will think that they know what the expert evidence could be from both sides because they just assume, well, I'm smart, I can figure it out. And the truth is you need to work with an expert closely, get the expert up to, up to speed sufficiently on the facts so that you can form a more intelligent assessment of what the expert testimony would be, would be from both sides. Um, I think one point yeah, please. I think is, should be emphasized, and that is uh, just as a, a parody, that if one side is going to have an expert, uh, you don't want to be there without one. It just, it just doesn't look right. So I Absolutely. think you've got to have that expert prepared. Uh, it doesn't look good if one side has the expert and the other side doesn't have the expert. As a potential expert, I'm in favor of both sides having expert and a consulting expert. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, we'll, uh, we might even hire Dr. Bao. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Take your chances. <laughs> okay, if we, can, uh, if we can just move to the event study or, or materiality expert. Um, well, let's say you're talking in, in this insider trading case or in a, um, 
in a more conventional securities uh, fraud case, you're talking about, well, what caused the, uh, you know, is, let's say you're talking about is a stock drop uh, really something that's, uh, you know, so, let's say is the stock drop so large that it indicates, you know, after there's disclosure, is the stock drop so large that it indicates that the information was material? Let's say that's, that's the issue. And you're thinking about an expert. The automatic thought is, well, I'm going to hire an economist um, to do that. And that's one alternative, and that's certainly the conventional alternative, and maybe in, in many cases the wise alternative. But you should also consider, are there other kinds of experts who could present that kind of evidence? And maybe, in a particular case, it'll be a little safer. Um, one, one, alter one alternative kind of expert that I've used in the past uh, is a statistician. If you can get a statistician, and there aren't many of them, but if you can get a statistician who is uh, uh, able to be a tutor and to explain to a uh, to, to explain to the judge, let's, let's assume it's a, it's a judge case, can explain to the judge the statistical concepts in a way that's relatable and will accord with the judge's common sense. If you do that, you're going to end up presenting, in a sense, a more scientific, numbers-based testimony that's it's more narrow, it's more limited. It's also a little bit less subject to veering off into areas where the person could be, could be cross-examined. An economist has, you know, other, can, can also do statistical analysis, but would naturally be giving broader testimony, which, ha which can be good. In some cases, it will have pros, it will have cons. In some cases, the pros will outweigh the cons. In other cases, the cons will outweigh the pros. But there's a tendency, there's a tendency to be automatic in your choice of, of experts. Oh, well, I'll get an economist for that. And one has to think through, um, okay, if I pick an economist, what's the cross going to look like of an economist? Will, they have a wide, will that economist have a wide-ranging cross? statistician, you might not be able to cross-examine that person with various documents that are unrelated to a, a numerical analysis. That's not to say that a statistician is better than an economist. Uh, these, case, these issues are, of course, fact-dependent. But when you're selecting a, an expert uh, you, and you have a choice of people from different disciplines, you want to make that choice based on the facts of the, of the particular case. Um, it's now nine o'clock, so I'm going to hand back the uh, uh, I'm going to hand back the uh, uh, baton to you. Okay. Dan.